just take a look at those trunks of his there. They're riding very high, and the referee, Mickey Van, has told Corbett that if he gets punched on that waistband, it will not be counted as a low blow. The referee thinks that's too high. And he's told Corbett as much in the preliminaries. Well, Belfast, this sadly divided city, is often united by its passion for sport, and they're all right behind Darren Corbett here as he goes for Chris Oko's Commonwealth Championship. Corbett with a reputation of a big puncher. He's won five times in the first round. He's finished seven opponents off inside two. Oko will try to use his height and reach and class to work behind the jab and maybe whip, whip in some reminders with his own right hand of his own potency. Well, already he's getting off quickly with the jab, Oko. I think he knows this is an important fight. He knows Corbett's going to come at him. He's obviously prepared himself mentally for that. Good right hand from Oko, who started quite fast. Dean Powell, I know, from speaking to him this morning over breakfast, has said to him, you've got to go out there and impose yourself straight away. And Corbett's going to try and do as we expect. He's going to try and come forward looking for the hooks. But he, Oko is just picking him up on the way in with a good solid jab. He's got to try and do that just to keep Corbett off balance. Good start this by Oko, working to his carefully prepared plan. Not letting Corbett make the explosive start that perhaps he would have wanted, but there's a real intensity about Darren Corbett. He's taken himself off to the seaside to prepare alone for this contest in the way that uh, some famous old fighters from these parts used to like Barry McGuigan, our own Barry McGuigan and Dave McCauley who's also here at ringside tonight from the world flyweight champion. Good shots, those from Oko gets through with a cracking looking right hand and at the moment Corbett just unable to get his punches off at all because Oko's so busy. That's better from Corbett. He scores with a left and then a right hand. And that was the, the best point in this round for Corbett. Landing with them hooks. He's starting to roll forward better now, but Oko's still using that jab to good effect, picking up the points. Watch then for Corbett making a target of the body. I know that's very much part of their battle plan. Slow Oko down. champion has dominated this first round though and I think the battle lines are very carefully drawn already strategically good work with the jab a much improved weapon of Corbett's he's improved his technical skills but not enough to avoid those punches from Oko who will have certainly won that first round To Belfast, good atmosphere here. Commonwealth Cruiserweight Championship action live. A title held by Glenn himself a decade ago. And a very good start from Oko. There's two nice punches, a long uppercut, and then he brought the right oh, hand over the top. Corbin had a little bit of success there with the left hook, but Oko was moving away from it. And Oko looks nice and sharp. He looks like he's got his, his mind in gear for this fight. Second round. The scheduled distance is 12. Corbett starting to work better with his own left jab and getting through with the left hook as well twice. This is more like it from Corbett, who suddenly ups the tempo at the start of round two. He may not have liked the pattern much in that first round, and he looks as if he's prepared to ask some far more serious questions of Oko in the second. Well, he let them left hook score, but I must say Oko did get the, the glove up to catch them there. So he's obviously, he knows what what Corbett's going to come with. He's going to come with the, the big hooks over the top. That's what his battle plan's going to be. Good right to the body by Oko. Trying to stay mobile, but 12 rounds is a long distance in which to make these tactics work for you. Corbett has to roll as he comes in. He's got to keep moving that head. He can't allow 
He seems to be picked off with that jab too much. He's got to try and roll under the jab and come back with the hook. As he's walking forward in straight lines at the moment with not too much bobbing and weaving. There's the body punching that Corbett is looking for to slow down Oko. Good tactics. It's a good tactic. He's got to be careful, Corbett, when he comes in to look for a body punch because that's where he can leave himself open. Corbett maybe significantly getting into range to land his jab once or twice as well. This could be, could be a very, very good fight. But certainly they're both starting at a good pace. Corbett on the attack, Oko defensively, but working hard defensively, especially with that jab. Corbett very much the hunter. That's good work by Corbett. He's improved his skills, he's getting through that left hand, trouble, Oko, then a right hand, he's caught with another left, and Corbett, that was his best rally, and Oko looked in trouble there in the second round. The gloves started to go down, he's caught again by combination punches, a right uppercut too, and Corbett with decent hand speed as well, has decked Oko with a right hand, and the champion may not get up from that. He's been told to go to a neutral corner, Corbett, he started his celebrations, somehow Oko gets up, he's cut as well I think, Nicky Brand's taking a close look, he lets it go on, but Corbett's got him here, another left hook, Oko is all over the place, and the Irishman is on the verge here, the referee stands in, it is over, in the second round I think, or did the bell sound or did the referee stop it? Absolute mayhem and confusion, he's cut as well, Surely the referee wouldn't let it go on. There was the bell amid all of that, and it may not be the end of the fight. It may not be the end of the fight. The crowd think it is. We couldn't hear the bell. And, of course, the bell is only supposed to save a fighter in the last round. So, amid all that confusion, should the count have gone on? It probably should have done, but don't really blame Mickey Van. I mean, it was absolute chaos in there. Yes, he did count on him. He got hounded on. He waited till Oko got up. Oko did get up. He then took him to the corner. So that's the fact that the, the fight is carrying on and Mickey Van has done everything right. It, it may be called off any moment, this fight. Frank Maloney saying things to Mickey Van over in the corner. Are they going to pull him out? The bell's gone. They're having to usher Oko's corner men out of the ring. That was an amazing escape for Oko. But has a minute been long enough? Here's the third round. The legs still look very weak of Oko. He doesn't look as if he's quite recovered from this. And obviously, Corbett's going to put the pressure on. It doesn't look as if, if he gets a few punches, he'll get through and he'll hurt Oko again. He's getting through. There's a cut as well for Chris Oko. Amid all of that confusion at the end of the second round. What an improved fighter. This Darren Corbett is, he used to look a sloppy, podgy heavyweight who was going nowhere. Here he's got some real devil about his work, hand speed as well, his jab is good, and he still has the power. He got the success. Gets worse for Oko as well, Glenn. He got the success when he started to put his punches together. He wasn't just looking for the single hoop, he was putting them in twos and threes, and that's where Oko didn't have an answer. So he's got to try and do more of that, Corbett. Crowd are on their feet. And the cut's a bad one for Oko, too, as if he didn't have enough problems in there. And there was a punch from Oko after the referee had said break. Corbett gets it with a left hook! That's his answer to it! Oko's down again in the third. And he stopped it! Darren Corbett is the Commonwealth Cruiserweight Championship. It's a big triumph for Corbett and for Barry Hearn's camp as well. Absolutely potty in scenes reminiscent of the days when Barry McGuigan was wowing them down at the King's Hall. That was some performance, Glenn. A terrific performance by Corbett. He seized his opportunity. He was finding it hard in the first couple of rounds. 
behind the jab and he picked the pace up start putting his punches together he did it well and he he packed some real power when he started to get through he kept the pressure on really well he just never gave Oko a chance to recover and that was a, a good performance and you can guarantee he'll get notice for doing that well he is quite in the shake-up of big plans now Darren Corbett after that victory he really did perform quite superbly there Oko boxed very well in the first round but once Corbett started to let the big punches go and let's be fair about it he engineered those opportunities too with an excellent left jab he did he just for the first time he started to throw the left jab I think this is right at the end he really got a lot of power into that punch just bent his knee, started to move his head and went through with the punch all the way and that was such a good powerful punch really got everything into that and just didn't give Chris Oko a chance and remember Oko's never been on the floor before so that suggests Corbett packed some real power in those punches well it's a great win that for Darren Corbett the Irish champion now the Commonwealth champion and I think the plan there's some talk beforehand of taking him to the European title shot against Johnny Nelson that would be interesting wouldn't it great clash of stars let's get it officially now from our MC John McDonald ladies and gentlemen one minute and 23 seconds of the third round the referee Mickey Van has stopped the contest for the new Our supervisor this evening, Mr. Simon Block. Well, an exciting night. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for Darren Corbett. And somewhere Ladies sitting at ringside, I'm told, Chris is his sister-in-law, who's been very seriously ill, and I'm told has come out of hospital, especially to watch him tonight. So, a marvellous thrill for her as well. Well, well. It's a moment of fighter dreams of. It really is. That's his, his first major championship. It was the first one that what I won. It meant a lot to me. And obviously, it's a good place to start to go for bigger titles. And he did it in a very good fashion. So I think he'll be very, very pleased with that. So what was Darren Corbett doing at heavyweight all that time? This looks much more like his natural division doesn't it and he's taken his power with him to the commonwealth cruiserweight title belt he's going to have a word with ian dar well here is uh, darren corbett congratulations darren your first ever championship that was explosive stuff I told you last night and that got your bonus the bonus came see after three rounds which three rounds was like that all the time because i wasn't even tired you know i was saying to myself find out what he has in the first round he hits like a woman. Nothing. He has nothing. I told you he was tinny. Just tell us somehow you read things at the end of the second round. Everyone thought you'd won the fight there, did you? Did you hear the bell? No. Well, neither did I. But the referee did, so you had to go out and do it all over again. I went and done it all over again. So the, I was letting Chris get off his shots. I had to see what he had. You know, but this is my life. What does this mean to you, becoming Commonwealth champion? Because I said in the commentary there, there was a time, quite honestly, when you were a heavyweight, you looked a bit podgy, overweight, slow, going nowhere, but a totally transformed fighter. But a lot of reporters say I still look a bit podgy. <laughs> <laughs> Played heavyweight, middleweight. Fair play to Chris Oko. He gave me a chance in Belfast. But I, at the press conference, I said them out. I knew he didn't want it. You know, like, hopefully Chris comes back he's young he come back maybe fight for British and European title it's a wonderful night for all these Belfast fans I've been here when McGuigan and McCauley have won and this, this is your, your boy isn't it Darren Jr fancy him being here too no uh, he's at the mall so yes you know like Frank Maloney says on June the 2nd boxing dies in Belfast I can't hear any mourners no it's a tremendous atmosphere um, you proud of dad tonight has he got anything to say or is he a bit shy who's number one <laughs> he's proud of his dad here's Barry Hearn as well now Barry's had some tough times a big big triumph for your camp Barry well you know we've been Darren Corbett fans when the days when he was 17 and a half stone this boy is a great fighter not not only because he can punch but he can take a shot you've got to live 36 minutes with this and it's impossible he's like an animal you can't get him off 
and I'm so pleased for the people of Belfast. We've been labouring here for the last couple of years. They've turned out their numbers, and they've got a new hero. And believe me, this boy could create a world record. He could be the first fighter in history to win three world titles going down a weight because he's a cruiserweight now. Believe me, he could end up a super middleweight. And Steve Collins and Robin Reed, don't even take your kit out of the bag because this boy will absolutely annihilate you. He punches heavier than anything I've ever seen. Is, is this the plan, that you're going to go down even further in the weights? Is this serious? I just live at Dubai. Let's bring in Jerry's story, because he deserves a bit of credit here. The trainer, of course, Barry will know him from his uh, Irish amateur today's Barry McGuigan. Jerry, um, congratulations to you as well. How improved is Darren Corbett? What I said to you yesterday, the boxing skills that he has now, you've seen that in the second round of that fight. The left hand never stopped, never left Chris' face before he started bringing over the right hand. So, as I said yesterday, if he hits anyone, and I mean anyone, they'll go. Chris Oko has nothing to be ashamed of there. Corbett, I've seen him knocking out 27 people with the one shot, not combinations, one punch. He's a one punch hitter. If he hits them, they're gone. Well, congratulations to all of you tonight, Darren, and, and the whole camp. Bit of a family occasion, too. I would like to thank Barry, Jerry, young Jerry, everyone in the gym for standing by me. I'd like to thank my whole family for staying behind me. And especially, I'd like to thank the fans. Only for the fans, this wouldn't happen. Well, you gave them what they wanted tonight. Well done, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, big night for the...